Hello everyone, I'm Lucas Artori, and this is the paper Integration of Test Generation into Simulation-Based Platforms, an Experience Report. So regarding uh, the testing autonomous uh, systems, what you have is usually to have a test case that uh, you need to generate and it has to be challenging and the test cases, they have to be diverse because then they will be running the simulation as you can see in the picture and you will ext extract information and traces that you can analyze to see what went wrong and what went right. These test cases, they are uh, comprised of, uh, they contain uh, complex CD environments. And the problem with the generation of these test cases is that you need to generate and manage uh, structured data that has semantic constraints. So uh, for this, our approach was to use a test generation framework because during our previous work uh, at LAS, we developed TAF, that is a tool to generate the structured data that I was uh, mentioning before. And uh, this paper is about the experience report of uh, integrating TAF into two industrial testing frameworks that were already uh, pre-existing. So after this uh, introduction, uh, the outline is to um, uh, explain to you the TAF framework and the testing framework to detail you the two case studies. And then the feedback on these two case studies will be in the lessons learned, so what we have extracted. And then I will conclude with a few remarks. So regarding TAF, TAF is short for Testing Automation Framework. And as you can see uh, in the diagram, TAF starts from an abstract uh, test case. So it's a high level uh, model and a description of the test cases. In this, in this abstract test cases, um, we have ranges for the parameters, okay? And, and a structure connecting them. Then TAF transforms them into instantiated test cases, meaning that the parameters, they have specific values now, so concrete values, but also TAF can produce simulation, simulation uh, specific files. And TAF generates the test cases by, uh, with the added diversity using random sampling, and by respecting the constraints using the Z3 solver. And we present TAF at QRS 2021, and TAF is freely available at, uh, at the repository at last. So zooming in a bit uh, inside TAF, uh, you can see on the left that the user creates the template that is uh, with an XML-based language. And the template is structured with a tree structure, meaning that it has a hierarchical structure. That takes this template, parses this template, and with this data factory, creates uh, test cases. Then it creates also a skeleton for the export that will be customized by the user. And with this customized export, TAF will create uh, the files that the user wants. So they could be, for example, uh, simulator specific files. Another important uh, feature of TAF is that it supports uh, partially instantiated test cases, meaning that you can have an abstract uh, test case with where you want to select some specific values for some parameters. And then TAF will generate uh, the values for the um, other parameters. And I want to add that uh, we developed TAF because um, we had uh, uh, our research question with the previous case study. And we couldn't find a tool that was solving the constraints and adding diversity because usually the tools uh, already add diversity or they solve the constraints, but they always give you uh, one solution and usually it's the simplest solution. And this is, was, not, was not sufficient uh, for our case study. Now, I will talk a lot uh, about uh, testing phases. So I will start with the generation where we uh, first we model and then uh, you generate test cases. These cases are executed in, in simulation. And in the analysis, we, we check the traces and the logs from the simulation to see what happened. Now, zooming in again, um, for our uh, testing frameworks and um, the, uh, case studies, as I said before, start from the template. Uh, you have an export uh, with TAF that creates the instantiated test cases. These test, test cases are run in the simulator, which uh, records usually data, so it can be sensor data, but also logs. And usually it's 
the ground truth, so the log of the perception of the simulator, and the perception of the robot. This data is then analyze, analyzed by the oracle and an analyzer to produce experimental results. That the, the, and the results will then be used by the developers to see what went right and what went wrong. Now, regarding the two case studies, the first one is a, is a case study of an agricultural um, robot uh, for weeding produ produced by NIO Technologies. Our, uh, our mission uh, was to, to validate uh, the, the mission of the robot and we had access to the system under test, which was the real software of the robot. And you can see the robot uh, in the picture. Uh, our focus was actually integrating the test cases in the already existing continuous integration pipeline of the company. And they were also um, customizing and developing the simulation framework. So what are our contributions to the case study of NIO? Well, we started by modeling the, the test cases so with the, uh, practically creating the, the model for the mission, expected behavior um, and environment. And then we integrated TAF, so the TAF generation, <clears throat> and we had to connect it to the existing framework of the company and also to robot framework. You can see the, the light green box. And, and robot framework is a framework that, that helps you to manage uh, other modules. So in this case, uh, it was launching the simulator and the robot software, putting them in contact. And then uh, it was providing a partial uh, online Oracle and was recording uh, some logs. Uh, after that, we also uh, provide the specification requirements and also the first draft actually of code uh, for the logs. So it meant adding the perception of the log of the perception of the robot to the simulator. But also uh, uh, we added the properties of the Oracle online offline. And then also uh, test suite management. Because one thing is when you start uh, to do the testing always with the same predefined test cases. And another thing is when you have a framework that, uh, you, in which you can select the number of test cases to generate. Now, after in the integration, uh, we were able to perform a test campaign in which we compare the simulation-based testing with the field testing. In the simulation, um, we performed 500 uh, rounds, where 500 rounds were performed. And uh, this number uh, stems from the fact that we had two templates. So we, we wanted to test uh, two fields. We could compare with real fields in uh, uh, I mean, real fields uh, available in reality. Uh, each template um, was used to generate 125 test cases. And each test case was run twice. Uh, the results are that uh, 55 uh, test cases um, led to, fa to failures. So they had a failed verdict. 51 uh, failures were due actually to, uh, to the simulation framework that is in development. So this had to be expected. And mostly they were about uh, configurator, configuration issues or miscommunication between the simulation, the simulator and the, the robot. And uh, four failures were actually due to a bug in the system. And we were able to confirm it with field testing. It was done uh, afterwards uh, without knowing actually the, the, the results of the simulation-based uh, testing. And I want to stress out that this uh, is already a robot in production. And this version of the software, uh, the robot software that we tested is a, a quite stable version. So we were not expecting to find a lot of bugs. Now moving to the second case study, it's about a road intersection where there is a perception system, so sensors, that monitor the road intersection and the, the perception system <clears throat> tracks the dynamic agents, so pedestrians and uh, vehicles. And this tracking information is sent to an autonomous bus that has to cross and pass through the road intersection. So the autonomous bus uh, can decide if uh, it needs to accelerate or decelerate. Our focus was on generating test cases uh, where there were uh, dynamic agents 
that would produce uh, diverse sensor data in, able, in order to stress uh, the perception system. And you can see, for example, the sensors inside the, uh, the red uh, circles. So <clears throat> our contributions uh, can be summarized uh, and can be seen uh, uh, on the left. So you will see the generation part uh, made by LAS, and then on the right, you will see the, the simulation part uh, of the company. So if you focus uh, on the bottom left, we, um, we model the test cases. So we added the template. We then customize the export in order to create simulator input files. And simulator input files would contain of course, uh, various parameters, but uh, also the parameterized behavior of the agent, agents. But to manage this parameterized behavior, we needed also to create additional scripts that then were used inside the simulator of the company to manage the, um, the, the test cases and make sure that the test cases, they were uh, executed as expected. Then when the test cases were run in the simulator, the software of the company would record the data and the company would perform the analysis. Now, a small comparison <clears throat> to show some interesting things. Uh, regarding the test case, for NAYO, it was a field with the rows that the robot had to weed. For SIC, it was a road intersection uh, where there were agents following predefined path. For the system under test, we had access to it for NAYO. Uh, but not with the seek. A uh, big difference actually was in the environment because uh, for now it's static, so they're obviously only um, agent moving. Uh, why for CK um, the environment is, is really dynamic and this uh, provided an interesting challenge uh, for us, also for the modeling, of course. Uh, regarding the Oracle, NIO is already a definition of a uh, they were already an uh, online and offline uh, checks. While for SIG, we didn't have access to it. And uh, they don't have a, an online Oracle. Uh, and they do uh, post-processing. So the company does the post-processing and statistical analysis. Uh, the focus for NIA was to generate, for us, was to generate the word, the mission, the Oracle. Uh, why for SIC? It was uh, the big focus was actually really generating uh, dynamic agents to to provide more uh, sensor data. Regarding continuous integration, NIO uh, has uh, a big uh, pipeline. Uh, they have an Oracle because the robot is already in production, and they've sold already more than two hundred robots. While for CKG, um, they have some uh, continuous integration for some parts, but we didn't have access to it. And some other parts are more in, uh, in R and D phase, and so this provided interesting um, different case studies uh, for us uh, for the integration of stuff and for the modeling uh, and the export. So now, regarding the lessons learned, what did we extract uh, from these case studies and from this integration? I will focus now on the generation part and actually about the data modeling that is the input for the generation and the exporting the framework specific files. So the output of the generation. Regarding the generation, uh, so the data model for the test generation is not independent of the simulator. Uh, what does it mean? It, it means that, for example, with SIG, uh, there are some pedestrians path inside the simulator that we cannot ignore when we are doing the modeling or the export. We have to interface with them. Uh, and you cannot create something different and try to fit it inside. While for NAYO, for example, uh, we wanted to model some missions in which the robot would spawn in the middle of the field, but this uh, was not possible because they are still developing the simulator and they will introduce this uh, feature in the next uh, releases. And then for the data model, you should not uh, you should consider not just the inputs, but also the expected output. Uh, to give you an example, uh, NIO has a timeout uh, that, is, that links the robot speed, the length of the row, and the number of rows. Uh, 
and Taf could have determined the timeout values at generation time. Okay. Um, and this is um, this is uh, important because sometimes the expected outputs, the expected behavior, is always the same for all the test cases or uh, for groups of the test cases. Why uh, for uh, in, for other cases, you need to have an expected behavior for uh, every specific test case. And this was our case in which we had to to provide the to generate the word the mission and the Oracle properties and the expected behavior for each test case. And since you're generating a lot of different test cases, this is uh, really interesting. And then the, the, the generation <clears throat> has to produce additional scripts so to manage the, the test cases and the test suite. So you, you, you cannot just uh, produce uh, input files for the simulator, but for example, in the case study of SIC, you also need to write some scripts that you can generate with TAF or uh, you can code manually. That would manage uh, the, the, the input files that you've generated. So in this case, we had a script uh, managing the behavior of the agents. Now, this slide contains the two most important uh, lessons that I want you to, uh, to, to learn, to remember. And the first one is that the identification of the constraints or physical constraints is not obvious. And an example is in the, in the figure, in the picture. So there was, uh, we had to introduce a constraint <clears throat> that would delay the spawning time of the vehicles and pedestrians. Why? Because you can model, uh, you can start modeling it, but until you simulate, you will not see exactly if, if this is a, um, if this is correct, unless you have a, a old specification or a requirement, but this is not always the case, or you would have to add them later. And so this was an important step uh, to find the, the constraints, for example, of the behavior of the dynamic agents. And then second important thing is that the building of the model should always be iterative and incremental. Uh, to give context, uh, for the for NIO, we started with a previous model of a previous case study. We tried to modify and adapt it for the new case studies, but case study, but this created a lot of problems. So we started from zero again. We added a few parameters, see what the output was in the simulator. <clears throat> we went back, added another parameter, and fixed other things. We simulated it. We added a constant, and so on. Okay, and this uh, gives you really the best outcome and is the best way to proceed. Now, regarding the automation of the execution and logging that are inside the simulation phase, uh, of course, the system on the test can introduce failures, but the tool chain can also introduce spurious failures, as uh, testified by the uh, 51 <laughs> test cases uh, of NIO, uh, tests that, that led to failure, and they were uh, related to uh, the, the simulation framework that was in development. And this is really important. To diagnose this, you always need to save configuration files. And this is because some developers, they treat the configuration files differently from the code, but you should have a version in control for the code and for the simulation, uh, for the configuration files. You should also use uh, containers like Docker to avoid dependency L. <clears throat> you should always consider non-determinism. And you should always um, uh, determine um, unstable tests that are called flaky tests. So sometimes they, they fail, but if you run them enough times, they pass. It can be due to a, a lot of reasons, but usually you would have to reconsider and um, uh, change or um, restructure the test. So then it becomes more deterministic. And then this is actually, uh, a more general lesson that, has a, that entails more uh, important uh, findings, uh, not just about the, the integration, <clears throat> is that the simulator uh, depends on the test objectives. So you would have different simulators, different objectives. For example, SIG needs a really good uh, realistic uh, sensor data. So they use a commercial simulator. While NIO, uh, they want to uh, iterate fast, so, and, and simple physics. So they use PyBullet and actually a customized version of PyBullet. And this is uh, 
related actually to the fact that the data model model cannot be independent of the subject. But in general, uh, this fact of the, uh, the the selection of any test objective is important because you could have uh, uh, a company with the and while the company is developing the product, uh, you could have different simulators at different times of the development, or you could also have different simulators in parallel depending on what you want to test. And this means that when you, you are introducing a test generation facility um, like TAF, you need to take this into account. Now, regarding uh, the analysis uh, phase and mostly regarding the Oracle, uh, there are two types of Oracle. So offline, where you analyze the traces and the logs, and online, so it's during the, the simulation time. Uh, you use an online oracle uh, when your interest is really uh, to stop as soon as there is a violation and you don't want the simulation to proceed. So, uh, example, for NIO, if there is a collision, then <clears throat> it would be a waste of resources to, to continue the simulation. So they just want to see uh, the failure and see what happened during the failure, before the failure. Then, uh, if you want, uh, you, you can have an offline oracle that is usually more complex than an online oracle and more computationally expensive. Um, and you can use it uh, to perform a more complex analysis, like the post-processing that SIG was doing. And, it, and you can also use it because it's really easy to change the properties of the oracle or um, the thresholds, for example, uh, or the values. <clears throat> and without relaunching the simulation, you can just rerun the analysis on the data that you recorded and you can see, for example, ah, if, what if I change this threshold value? Would it uh, still fail the test or not? And then this is um, about the logging, the, the logging capabilities. When you have uh, subjective data of the perception of the robots, you should always have a correspondence one to one and at the same uh, unique time uh, with the ground truth. So perception of the robot and ground truth should always uh, record um, <clears throat> equivalent uh, parameters or events uh, or um, things like the position and the speed. And uh, you should also log more uh, uh, from the simulator. So uh, to conclude, uh, I've shown that TAP has been successfully integrated in, into two industrial testing frameworks and that with the test cases generated by TAP, we could find bugs. Uh, the integration of the automated test uh, generation actually uh, is not just plug and play, it requires effort and it does not to be underestimated. Uh, the lessons that we've learned will help the practitioners that are working on the validation of similar robotic systems or autonomous systems. And in the future, we plan to combine TAF with other uh, generation algorithms. So for example, genetic algorithms and other testing frameworks. Thank you for your kind attention and I'm at your disposal for questions.